So here we are with our um, block out of our ship uh, as we left it in the previous stage. Also now when uh, I created this mesh library I'm just gonna merge the, the whole library into the um, into the same scene. Um, you can see there's uh, a little bit more uh, of uh, actual pieces than you have been seen in the um, in the mesh library section. Uh, also just for uh, easier navigation and um, uh, managing the scene I'm gonna create a new layer and just hide the, uh, the upper or the zeppelin part itself so it's not on our way. Uh, I quite encourage you to start up start uh, using of uh, start using the uh, the actual uh, layers when working on your uh, scenes especially more complex scenes uh, it's uh, just so much easier to you know kind of uh, hide and show objects and uh, uh, combining them into the different groups and subgroups and stuff like that so it's uh, there is so much you know uh, so many benefit so many b benefits of uh, actually using the layers and uh, now here I'm just uh, gonna go and uh, start refining this uh, base base shape that we previously created. Some things obviously are gonna stay the same, some other I'm gonna change. Uh, mostly at least the, the main part of the ship is gonna stay the same. I'm using the symmetry at uh, this point because it's quite obvious that the main body of the ship is uh, gonna stay symmetrical. Um, the only kind of uh, asymmetry is going to be uh, caused or produced by the actual external pieces, not the uh, the, the actual body mesh itself. Um, I like the symmetry in in a in certain uh, kind of um, uh, mechanical pieces, but then. Uh, it's just so much easier on the eye when there's uh, certain parts that breaking those, you know, kind of uh, uh, even surfaces. Here I'm just taking a look at the uh, more or less target uh, that we're aiming for. And since we have the uh, mesh library created previously, uh, now it's just a question of uh, picking up certain shapes and pieces and uh, placeholders and uh, replacing them with the pieces from the actual uh, mesh library. Uh, those are the uh, elevation thingies up in, on the front, on the frontal part of the, uh, the actual ship. So I'm um, uh, just um, taking that piece and, well, not really reshaping it, but mostly sca scaling it down to fit the actual proportions of the ship. And uh, just a question of kind of uh, fitting this newly created shapes and uh, mechanical pieces uh, to, the, um, to the actual ship itself and uh, I mean it's almost like a puzzle but uh, since I'm not a puzzle type in, in, in general um, this is more like a uh, fun puzzle for me um, some things you can uh, you know multiply you know kind of duplicate and uh, Again, if like I mean, there's never just enough of the uh, actual pieces in the library itself, but you can always improvise on the fly. Like here, for example, I didn't know that you know this piece needs to you know for example go you know I imagine it's gonna be kind of straightforward, but uh, you know slight adjustments and uh, you make it work. Looking from different you know sides and seeing if I'm liking it or not here I just noticed that you know this kind of fits but not you know quite enough so I need to find uh, a bit of uh, different solution for it as well since these are like very individual pieces I'm gonna group them together and move them around eventually I'm gonna take certain pieces of this shape and attach them together just for the sake of uh, easier texturing process later on. For the texturing process itself, uh, just to be prepared, we are going to use uh, Mudbox. Uh, Mudbox itself, I mean, it's great for um, for texturing and uh, kind of basic sculpting. Uh, I mean, it's easier to learn that software because of the easier uh, way of navigating and uh, interface itself and tools. 
but when it comes to the more complex uh, more complex uh, sculpting then really the Z brush takes takes all the all the juices from that size takes the win really that's the two really to go for right now I'm taking those side uh, what are these uh, intakes I guess uh, they should represent kind of the intakes um, I'm taking uh, taking each piece and really just kind of redefining adding more geometry to it because uh, I mean you can easily if you create enough you know detailed uh, textures you can even go with this but then again when it comes to the shading itself and applying uh, B-ray materials later on um, all these small details really take uh, they, they really kind of add uh, more richness to the actual object itself uh, another thing is really like I probably mentioned before one of my favorite tools is really chamfer uh, why chamfer is because now what I'm, uh, I'm going to apply uh, this uh, new material with the specular um, you're really gonna see how much of the, the actual difference does it, it makes uh, when you add your small details to, to the actual surface and uh, applying chamfer to the uh, all the edges uh, later on um, is itself like one single piece is not gonna change that much but later on when you have like the whole thing built together and put together uh, and if each piece has individual kind of uh, details um, it may you know adds really adds so much you know richness to the uh, to the overall piece or general general shape so I really encourage you to um, you know spend some time and uh, well, obviously playing with your nerves a bit but uh, really you know uh, stay focused and uh, Add as much as details as you can, or whatever if time allows you, to um, really reshape this and add so much detail into it that later on, when you when you start when you start uh, uh, combining things together and start shading and you know, lighting and whatnot, you know it's gonna make so much difference. Uh, so I'm you know scaling this to fit it a bit more nicely. Uh, I didn't want it to go completely inside of the uh, separate mesh of the actual body of the ship. I wanted to add some more space in between. And since now we're already here, I'm seeing this gap in, on the back. Excuse me. So I'm going to um, uh, reshape it uh, for further, you know, to uh, add, you know, fill, fill this kind of gap inside and. Uh, and at this point, really, I didn't know what what I wanted to, you know, create. Uh, I'm basically just going with the flow and see kind of what makes makes sense and what looks good. See, I'm I'm uh, seeing some kind of uh, uh, things that I don't like, and I just go very fast inside and just change it a bit. Even the concept actually left it as it used to be previously, but uh, going now in and uh, just changing a bit, chamfering some more. Well, of course, in this case, probably it's not even necessary to go uh, for this, uh, you know, these edges inside, but just in case, just to make sure that everything is good. So, one of those things that, you know, you can hide certain things and it probably wouldn't matter in the end but then again it probably bothered me because I know that it's there it's not necessarily perfect or the way I in the end I want it to be so just uh, better to do it now I'm gonna sleep better I guess uh, yeah here I'm just experimenting with the shape uh, those uh, uh, what are those things I don't know what we're gonna call them but uh, I multiply it, or actually, yeah, uh, copy another one, just to uh, add more details to the aero shape. Now going for the uh, the actual engines on the rotors. So here are some pieces that I created. So I just wanted to see. I have um, kind of two different versions of them, and this is the one that I kind of like the most. So instead of the uh, previous placeholders, I'm trying to fit this one in. Uh, another thing that I'm still missing at this point is really just the uh, 
this is just the, the rotor itself, right? And uh, the thing that it's going to actually uh, follow this shape and uh, make it, you know, attach to the actual uh, body of the ship, but still not created. So right now I need to go in and uh, kind of think about different shapes and what is that that it, you know, can be used to actually connect that to the ship. I guess you would really call this uh, kind of rapid prototyping 101. Uh, if if you don't have that in uh, inside of your concept, or you didn't find a solution that in uh, in advance, you can really just go in and kind of start sketching in inside of the 3D. Uh, my drawing skills are not that great, so uh, most of the time I really do all my kind of sketching. Uh, I mean, of course, I do something on a paper, but it's uh, really just for me to uh, visualize certain shapes and, and, and things, but uh, there's nothing really to kind of, uh, let's just say that that's not one of those uh, uh, sketchbooks that we would necessarily show to anybody. <laughs> let's just put it that way. So it's really for me, uh, my personal kind of uh, visual library for uh, different shapes. But... Um, other than that, uh, I use quite a bit uh, of splines, as you can see right now. Uh, splines are really handy, especially when you're working with the hard surface uh, shapes and models. Uh, one of the things with the splines is that um, you can use there, like inside of the splines itself, uh, just starting with a line or a circle or whatever, uh, you have the uh, ability to use uh, multiple shapes and combining them together to uh, get something completely new and unique um, like in this case now I'm just thinking afterwards that I, you know uh, instead of spending I don't know probably like a good 10 minutes or so to creating this shape is to uh, if I would just really know what I'm going for if I would have the, the previous uh, concept very nice drawing of, of, of this particular piece you know I would, could go probably much much faster but uh, since I'm really kind of um, eyeballing right now this shape and trying to figure out like how this actually needs to look like and now afterwards when I think about it like yeah okay now I, that I know what is the shape uh, the um, the end result supposed to be you know this could be you know done many different you know couple of different ways but uh, like I said always there's a couple of ways of doing things when it's uh, smart and efficient way another one it's not so well i don't know smart or not smart but at least not efficient which is uh, usually time consuming so uh, in this case i took that path and really just start eyeballing and see if i really dig this or not <clears throat> i do also know at this point that this uh, this in this project this piece or the whole ship is not going to be animated by uh, any means, um, that's not the uh, the end result that we're going for. So um, in other case, if I would, if this would go into the um, animation pipeline, I would really have to take care of um, of uh, different aspects of this model, like uh, taking consideration the actual functionality, uh, kind of the mechanics and uh, engineering side of the of the whole uh, moving pieces like this rotor that it's uh, connecting to the um, to the actual ship uh, I don't know uh, I guess I would use some kind of idea of uh, uh, pneumatic uh, technology behind all this so this would have you know uh, as a com uh, com complexity uh, we would need to take you know further steps and uh, really push it out and uh, see how the actually this piece would work uh, move, rotate, and whatnot. So, uh, but since we're not doing that, <clears throat> this is going to be kind of more simplified version of uh, of the actual working piece. <clears throat> and now that we have created the uh, the surrounding, uh, what is that shell? I guess around this uh, rotor. Um, I'm uh, taking it back from the isolation mode and just trying to fit around the uh, the actual ship. Uh, this kind of goes back and forth because uh, I mean I, there is something to the actual concept uh, that I'm kind of constantly looking 
at and um, trying to figure out is that really the way to go or not. Because I mean the concept itself, it is, uh, as you can probably can see, is taken from the uh, taken from the actual 3D model and kind of I repainted it and uh, did some texture texture work inside of Photoshop on top of that. <clears throat> And that's one of the way, ways of, uh, of doing if you have no really drawing skills or like constanting art uh, skills in, uh, on like 2D. Uh, and this is basically how I'm fighting against it. <laughs> Since uh, if working alone on a project like this, you really have to find your ways around. Um, I know that uh, this piece needs to be you know, this r r uh, rotors needs to be at, at least front and originally I only plan planned to uh, to have like two pieces because um, I mean later on we're gonna see in a later stage that I'm adding some more details to the actual uh, Zeppelin on the back uh, which probably on the on the final rendering is not gonna be visible but uh, just in case, if, if you work in a project like this, you, you have to take in consideration every single uh, possibility and every single um, option. 